Hello, Facebook family, friends. Thank you to all who joined in on yesterday. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about memory loss. I'm going to quote two things that I found online because I felt like it was very close to how I, how things related to me as far as memory loss goes. Memory loss is a natural survival skill and a defense mechanism humans develop to protect themselves from psychological damage. Violence, sexual abuse, and other emotionally traumatic events can lead to disassociative amnesia, which helps a person cope by allowing them to temporarily forget details of the event. I like this quote because I felt like it really hit the nail on the head. It said, your psyche is sensitive, and if it blocks an incident, it was for its protection. So why is this particular situation near and dear to me? It's because I suffered with some memory loss and for a while I really thought that I was like going crazy or something. I just didn't understand um, what was going on and what had happened. So I'm going to share just a few events that um, I know that was associated to it because sometimes it can be from childhood trauma, um, dealing with sexual abuse or even physical abuse. It can deal with violence in the home. It can deal with uh, just so many different things. And so for me, even with the events of sexual assault, there was a time that I went through a period in my life to where I felt like, wow, is this really happening? Or did it really happen the way that I remembered it? I literally started to think that I was losing my mind because I couldn't just, you know, piece the pieces together. But I learned later on that all of those things was to protect me because since they were so severe, if I had really bought into the fact that, hey, these things actually did happen, it may have totally destroyed me. So it was me, my mind protecting basically me from me. But here recently, my, my youngest daughter reached out to me and she said, Mom, and she says, there's this lady on Facebook. And, and she said, she really, really wants to get in touch with you. Would you add her as your friend? Um, she said that she would never forget you. So when she told me the lady's name, I was like, mm, I don't really know who that is. And she said, well, she says she knows you real well. I said, okay, well, yes, I'll go ahead and add her as my friend. So I did. And immediately upon me adding her, she sent me a message. And she says, oh, my gosh, I'm so happy that I found you. I'm so happy that we can reconnect. And I was like, okay. Well, for most people who know me, I'm not a person who can fake or put on airs and all those things. And so I thought, how can I gently tell this lady that I don't know her? Now, here's the thing. I should have known her. The reason I should have known her is because she actually was one of the people who kept my baby girl when she was in elementary school. I should have known her because when me and my husband was pastoring the church, we were actually counseling her and her husband through marriage. I should have known her because I had had her in my house for dinner on several occasions, but I could not put a face with the name or any events whatsoever. This person, if she's listening, she'll know who she is. I'm not big on using names unless I've been given permission to do so. So I will not tell you who the person is. But what I will tell you is that as hard as it was, I was honest with her and I said, listen, here's the thing. I don't remember you. But if you'll be patient with me and you'll give me some time, I will work really hard to remember how we were close with each other. And so she gave me that wish she took her time and she would tell me about the different things that we did together. Sometimes maybe what I had worn, different phrases that I had used, the ways that I had prayed for her, um, the ways that she loved on my daughter who was ADHD and ODD and all of these things. And so it became a very precious moment to me. And when I told her that I had forgotten her, I'm sure that it crushed her. But she told me, I'm so happy that you were honest with me. And I'm so happy that through this three month process, and it took me about three months, a little snippet here and a little snippet there before I would remember who she was. But she was so extremely happy that I remember who she was. And I'm so thrilled that we connected together. I'm hoping that one day I can see her again, that we can have lunch and we can go out and that she was patient with me. And so I wanted to talk about this today because I learned later on that I wasn't the only person who was going through that. That was foreign to me. Like, why would I lose my memory? Well, in the process of it protecting things, there was things that I had forgotten, particular incidents during the time that I was sexually abused. There was times that I forgot incidents and people that I was close to that was surrounded around the time that I got divorced. And for y'all that know me, okay, that's been a couple of times. 
but I didn't realize just how severe it was. And then I started talking to other victims. And when they would start to share with me that, oh my gosh, I think I'm going crazy or I think I'm having early onset of dementia and all these things that really troubled and, and worried them, I knew that I had to get this message out there. So I just wanted to tell you guys that if you're suffering with memory, it's not always dementia. It's not always Alzheimer's. It could be, and those are crippling, crippling disease. But you should go and get some therapy or some treatment. And a lot of time it's triggered by PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And certain things that trigger you will also tap into that memory loss. Um, for me, because of PTSD, if I hear a loud noise, you know, like a book falls, I literally just about jump out of my skin and lose my mind. And I've been able to tell that shortly after that, if you're talking to me or telling me something, I, I clearly won't even remember what it is that you said because it took me back to that place of where a lot of noise was going on, you know, at the time. So it may seem that for some of this, I'm, I'm stuttering through it. And that's not my intention. It's just that you all will never know how difficult it is to share such deep and personal things. Now, here's the thing. I've, I've shared my story with many people over the years, but it's usually been on a one-on-one -on -one basis or doing our support group meeting where other people were sharing besides myself. And so I want you to not be hard on yourself. I want you just to pray and ask God to restore that memory to you full fold. You know, I serve a big God and I know that all things that have happened to me, he has been the one who has been able to get me to the other side. Will this be the very last time that I lose my memory? Absolutely not. And thank Bruchette. He said it can happen from a head injury, which recently I had a concussion. Bam, my head hit the racquetball court. And, you know, for a while, Bruce could tell me something. That's my husband. And I would be like, what? What are you talking about? And so, yes, it can happen in many different ways. But if you're suffering from any type of memory loss, regardless of what the traumatic event is, I would like for you to please join me in prayer right now so that we can pray that you will be restored. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for, for this time, Lord. We thank you for all of those who are going to listen to this message that was brought today, Father. Lord, we want them to take the pressure off of themselves that something is wrong with them, Lord. We want them to be restored. We want them to be set free. We want them to be healed, Lord. Have them contact scars of the past ministry. You can contact us through Facebook. You can contact us by our phone, 850-612-9847, or by email, scars of the past at scarsofthepast.net. There's so many ways to reach out to us. And the only way that you're going to get the help you need is first by serving Jesus Christ and allowing him to minister to you, to your whole body. And then also to connect with other people that may have gone through some of the same things and need the same type of support and help that you get. And that's what scars of the past is all about. It's all about supporting those that have been affected by sexual abuse, sexual violence, rape, assault. It's called so many different things, Lord. And so I'm asking you to touch every victim right now, Lord, and I'm asking them to not be silent, but instead speak up. And remember, our motto is that we stand against violence. We stand for freedom. I thank you, Lord, for the freedom and the liberty that you have given to each of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.